All right, so today we're going to learn about complex numbers. Pre prepare, prepare for your mind to be blown. 2x squared plus 8 equals 0. So we've done things like this before where you subtract 8, get the x squared by itself. If you divide by 2, you get negative 4. And then we take the square root of both sides, remembering that you add the plus or minus. And up until today, you would say, well, I can't take the square root of a negative, and so I stop there. Same thing with this one. If you add 8 to the other side, you get x squared plus negative 36 plus 8 would be a negative 28. Sorry. Yeah, 6 plus another 2. We got it. So x squared is negative 28, and same thing with that one. You'd say plus or minus square root of negative 28, and you'd have to stop there, because you can't take the square root of a negative until now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to define the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1 is going to be i. And the problem is, is that i stands for one imaginary unit. So this is what an imaginary number is. And the problem is it's badly named, poorly named, in that it says it's called imaginary. So what you have to get past is that it's called imaginary because the other numbers, our number line that we call, is called the real number line. So these are non-real numbers, imaginary numbers. So if you square both sides of this, i squared equals negative 1 then. gets rid of the square root. So two things you have to know, that if you have the square root of negative 1, you're going to make it i, and if you have i squared, you're going to turn any i squared into negative 1. So to take the square root of negative 5, you make that the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5. I can't take the square root of 5, so I just leave it. And I can take the square root of negative 1 and make that i. So you get the square root of 5 times i. Or if you're asked to square this, you get i root 5 times i root 5. Or in other words, that's i squared times root 25. Or i squared, we said, was equal to negative 1. So that's negative 1 times square root of 25 is 5. And so you get negative 5. So anytime you have a negative, you're going to end up with an i. So square root of negative 9. Square root of negative 9 is square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. Square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of negative 20. Well, we know the square root of 4. We still look for the perfect squares within there. So split it up into what we know. So the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 I can't take, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So let's finish up by finishing these warm-up problems that we solved up here. We've taken plus or minus square root of negative 4, so that is plus or minus 2i. And over here, plus or minus the square root of 28. So think 4 times 7 times negative 1. So that's plus or minus 2. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 7 stays square root of 7, and i. And that's where we have it. Notice that we get plus or minuses up here because we're solving an equation. We take the square root of both sides. Down here, we're just taking the square root. No equation, so no plus or minus. So here's the deal. We called it complex numbers. We've talked about imaginary numbers. Complex numbers have a real component, meaning real numbers, and an imaginary component. Together, they make complex numbers. So how does this fit into what we know already? When you first started, you started talking about whole numbers, which were the 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. And then you opened up your world and said, well, wait, what if 
you lend money to somebody, and so in, they go into debt, and so that includes negative numbers as well. One, or zero, one, two, three. Those are called the integers. And then we blew your mind some more and we said, well, there's fractions, or what we call rational numbers. Numbers in between. And so that's things like point three, repeated or one-fourth, anything that can be written as a fraction, as a ratio, a repeating decimal, or a terminating decimal, like 0.25, which is one-fourth. And then we went even further and said there's irrational numbers, and really the irrational numbers, like square root of 2, like pi, those are irrational numbers things that can't be written as as a ratio and actually these should be separate because this is saying that the rational numbers are part of irrational numbers and so that's no good um, so I'm going to revise our Venn diagram so um, we've got irrational out here, which is the pi, the root 2, non-repeating decimals, non-terminating. And so that's the irrational. Together, these make up what we call the real numbers. So over here, we have imaginary numbers. like i or negative 3i anything like that and together imaginary and real is complex are complex numbers so we are going to do um, complex numbers we're going to add them together subtract them and so the nice part about adding complex numbers is that you add the reals and you add the imaginaries so you get 12 plus 10 is 22, and you get negative 7i plus 9i, and so that's plus 2i. You add the real component, add the imaginary component. The only thing you have to worry about is when you subtract that you do 6 plus 2i minus 5 minus a negative 4i. So that really turns into plus. So 6 minus 5 is 1, and 2i and 4i, 4i make 6i. And that is adding complex numbers. All right, continuing, multiplying complex numbers. In order to multiply, you need to do 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And just treat the i like you would an x. i times i is i squared. Now, the only problem is, is we talked about how to reduce i squared back here. i squared is equal to negative 1. And so i squared is negative 1, so negative 15 times negative 1 is a positive 15. Distribute. This is 6i times 4 is 24i. 6i times negative 2 negative 12i squared. Don't leave i squareds. They are not reduced. So 12i squared is 12 times negative 1. So that's really plus 12. So I'm going to write it as 12 plus 24i. I'm going to reverse it. Because we always write our real and our imaginary a plus bi. Now this one is a complex number times a complex number. 6 times 5 is 30, minus 24i, 6 times negative 4, 2i times 5 is 10i, and 2i minus 4i is negative 8i squared. Well, so we have 30 minus 14i, negative 24 plus 10, 
and negative 8 and i squared is negative 1. So that's really plus 8. So you get 38 minus 14i. All right, on to the next one. Now you have three numbers multiplied together. So what I like to think is, first off, how would you multiply 2 times 3 times 4? Three numbers. You can either multiply 2 times 3 first, or multiply 3 times 4 first. The point I'm trying to make is that this 2i does not go to both of these distributed. You only distribute once. You don't distribute over multiplication just like we didn't over here. So, um, I like to group the binomials together first. That's just my preference. So I'm going to leave the 2i out here. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 27i minus 28i and plus 63i squared. So let's simplify first. We get 12 minus 27 minus 28, so that's minus 50, 65. Sorry, 55. And that's negative 1, so that's minus 63. So 2i, 12 minus 63 is negative 51, minus 55i. And we distribute again, and we get negative 102i. Minus 2 times 55 is 110 i squared. That again is negative 1. So that's negative 1. So that's negative 110 times a negative 1. So it's really positive 110 minus 102 i. So now what I want to show you is that you can actually use your calculator to type these in. Down here, if you hit the second button first, you can get i in there. Now, in order to use this, I believe that you have to be in A plus BI mode. So you hit the mode button, scroll down, make sure that not just real, but A plus BI is highlighted. So I'm going to type in 2i times 3 minus 7i, 4 minus 9i. And you get 110 minus 102i. And that's exactly what it got. So I showed this to you. Realize that I'm probably not going to put this on the non-calculator. Sorry, that I'm probably going to put this part on the non-calculator part of the test. Just because I want to make sure that you know how to do it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to think at all. And you could just type it in. It would be pointless. So know how to do it. Reduce any i squared you see to negative 1. Now the biggest thing to know is that sometimes i squareds you forget to reduce and so sometimes you get a little higher in the power. And so i squared is negative 1. i cubed is the same thing as i times i, i squared times i. So that's negative 1 times i or negative i. And i to the fourth, same thing as i cubed times i, or i squared times i squared, negative 1 times negative 1, or that's positive 1. And then you get i to the 5th, which is i to the 4th times i, which is 1 times i, so that's i again. So what you need to know is that i to the 6th will continue that pattern and go back to negative 1. Everything is a multiple to rotation of 4 i, negative 1, negative i, 1, i, negative 1, negative i, 1. And so if you wanted to know what is i to the 40th, well, i to the 40th, because it's a multiple of 4, is 1. So, something you can do, and the calculator also does it for you. Finally, conjugates. 
We did conjugates when we did um, rationalizing square roots. Again, because we can't, we're not going to leave an i in the denominator. And so we are going to do with i the same thing that we did with radicals. We're going to multiply by conjugates. And the whole reason we need conjugates is that 3 times 3 is 9. That's plus 12i. Oh, and because they have plus minus, you have minus 12i. And then minus 16i squared. So the whole reason we need them, that cancels out every single time. And then this will be a negative 1 times negative 16, so it'll really be plus 16. And so you just get 25. I cancels out. That's why you need it. Because we're going to multiply by the conjugate in the denominator. So that when you do 3 times 5, you get 15. 3 times i, you get 3i. Plus 20i. Plus 4i squared. And on the bottom, 5 times 5 is 25. I'm not going to do the plus minus part because I know plus 5 minus 5 cancels out. And then minus i squared. So that's 15 plus 23i minus 4. And this is 25. That's a negative 1. So minus a negative 1 is really plus 1. So we're going to get 15 minus 4 is 21 plus 23i over 26. And typically what we do is we separate this into 21 over 26 plus 23 over 26i. We have our a plus bi, and that's how we write it. Um, I don't know that I've tried this, but we could see if the calculator rationalizes for us as well. 5 minus i, convert it back to a fraction, yeah. Oh boy, messed up. Um, because 15 minus 4 is not 21, but 11. Easy mistake, right? Um, but so it gave you the fraction. So, if this is 2 plus 3i, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 2 and 3i, but with a minus in between. So we get, sorry that you couldn't see that, 2 times 6 is 12, minus 18i, plus 2i, minus 3i squared. And then you get 2 times 2 is 4, minus 9i squared. So you get 12 minus 16i, and that's a negative 1. So that's negative 3 times negative 1 is plus 3 over 4 plus 9, because i squared is negative 1. Do not leave any i squareds in your answer. 12 plus 3 is 15 minus 16i, 9 over, 9 plus 4 is 13. So you can leave 15, um, 15 over 13, minus 16 over 13i. And there you have it. Complex numbers. The biggest thing you need to know is that the square root of negative 1 is i. Don't leave any square roots of negatives. Don't think you can't do that anymore because they exist. You can take the square root of negatives. And when you square both sides, i squared equals negative 1. Two biggest things you need to know. You can take the square root and get i. You can square i squared and get negative 1.